Hey everyone, today I'm going to be sharing with you a phenomenon that seems unbelievable at first, but then I'll explain how I'm doing it. What if I told you that I can move this quarter into the cup without touching it? The video's playing in forward motion, not in reverse, no camera trickery going on whatsoever. Now, if you haven't guessed how I'm doing this, let me show you how I use the same power to levitate an apple. So how was I getting the quarter into the cup? With a little help from the Bernoulli principle. So in the Bernoulli principle, it states that whenever you have a fluid that's moving fast, the pressure is reduced. So all I did in order to reduce the pressure above the coin was to just blow over it really fast. <laughs> Look at that. Now it seems like it's not possible, but if you get it at just the right angle and blow at least 14 meters per second, you can get the coin to pop up. <sighs> now this is the same reason if you've ever wondered, when you get in your shower, turn on the shower, the shower curtain attacks you because suddenly you've turned on the water, the water starts squirting and it's bringing air along with it. So it suddenly starts moving a bunch of air in your shower and so that lowers the air pressure and so your shower curtain gets pulled in towards you. Now the Bernoulli principle is pretty cool and can cause some unexpected things to occur. For example, if I have a funnel and a ping pong ball, obviously if I suck up, the ping pong ball will stay in there as long as I'm sucking. But what about if I blow out? Will it still come out? Let's try it. <laughs> it stayed in there. For example, this Bernoulli principle is the same reason why when you put a ping pong ball in some flowing water, it sticks to the water. It's like it's just attracted to it. It's sucking it in there because the atmospheric pressure is much greater than the pressure inside the water flow because it's moving so fast. Sometimes you can see it kind of shoot through because the air pressure pushes it and it goes too hard and flies out the other end. And then it holds it. Now what's interesting about this is you can do it with almost all the US coins. A penny, a nickel, a dime, and a quarter all work. So the difference in air pressure needed is equal to one half times the density of air times the velocity of your air blowing over it squared. And then to get the velocity of air needed to lift each individual coin, you just take the square root of two times mass times gravity divided by the density of air times area of the coin. So for a quarter, that's 14 meters per second. A penny is 13 meters per second. A nickel is 15 meters per second. And a dime is 12 meters per second. So actually, even though a dime has lower surface area, you can actually get it to fly up with a smaller velocity by blowing over it. So let's try all the different coins. Okay, let's try the dime. There we go. That dime really popped up. Let's try the nickel. I can't get the nickel to go. Let's try the penny. Oh, that one's not too bad. Okay, good enough. Now what this also means that's interesting is that when there's really high winds, like in a tornado or a hurricane, and a roof blows off of a house, it's actually due to the high speed of the wind causing low air pressure, and then the high pressure from inside of the house pops the roof off. Hey everyone, thanks again for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you learned something and enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section and I'll try to respond to them. And check out theactionlab.com if you haven't seen the Action Lab experiment boxes and my experiment book that's for sale as well.
And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And also hit the bell so you can be notified when I release my latest videos. And remember to hit the bell and also turn on your YouTube notifications or the bell won't help you because you won't be notified. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.